Hello everyone, this is Mingbo Pen. In this video, let's talk about parametric energy HVAC modeling. Specific specifically, we are going to use Ironbark uh, plugin to build a, a full detailed HVAC system inside the Rhino Grasshopper with Ladybug tools. So this is our agenda. So at the beginning, I'll talk about the basics of the all energy modelings, which I have some slides from Chris Mackey, who is our co-founder of Ladybug Tools, and uh, he has some tutorials talking about the HVAC, uh, talking about the energy modeling from the geometry schedules, loads, and all some and other principles. I won't probably get into very details into those topics since he has already some tutorials out there, but I do want to mention some basics. And the second one is the HVAC systems. So in this video, I'm just, I'm going to only focus on the simple heating system for the demo to show the end to end workflow. And uh, in later tutorials, I will also cover some uh, cooling system and ventilation systems. And the third one, I'm going to introduce the iron bark with Ladybug tools. And the last one is the demo. So our target audience for this presentation mainly will be architectural designers who has no background of the MEP and the uh, entry level energy model and uh, uh, mostly university students. And of course, for experienced energy modeler or engineer who are looking for an efficient workflows workflow, and uh, this is probably the right place to learn something new, efficient workflows for your work. And uh, first of all, I before the presentation, I wanna show you some uh, advice and uh, disclaimers. And uh, first of all. I think we all have to accept the fact that energy modeling is very difficult. It is very difficult. And why is that? Because every simple uh, energy model contains more than hundreds inputs. And literally, it really contains millions of them. I can show you later inside the both Open Studio application or Ironbug uh, interface. And because there are tons of the inputs where it really takes time. It really takes time to find out what input really matters for your simulation. And uh, the second one is all models are raw, but it's better than no model. Because right now we have so many amazing tools to help us model to run real geometry based simulation instead of checking papers. Next, MEP engineers are not good at naming things and keeping them constant. If you have checked MEP joints like often, they name things, even, even in the same joint set, they name the same thing differently. Or the same thing different people call calling it differently. It's really confusing for some like entry level engine uh, modelers who has no idea what they are talking about. So the, for our purpose, whenever you try to model a system for the energy model, so for an energy modeler, we really have to understand how system works under the hood and uh, how systems delivers heat to the to each zones and how air loops work through the hydraulic water loops. And the next one is uh, don't build an energy model if you haven't really checked the sand pass. All I want to say from here is before questions the output of the your model, have you really checked very basic inputs or have you checked if the fan is running correctly every hour? Or is the heating system generating enough heating at the peak hour, etc. And the last one is I'm I personally I'm not an engine uh HVAC engineer or MEP engineer. And this tutorial won't make you an HVAC, HVAC engineer. But what I can help you with is I can help you to be a better energy modeler. Now let's start with uh, basics of our energy modeling.
Well, first of all, I think it's very important to, to remember the first law of the thermodynamics, which is the energy can never be created or destroyed. That means in our energy modeling world, the energy goes into the system equals energy or energy leaving the system. And the energy goes into the building equals all energy leaving the building. Now let's look at what kind of energy that goes into the building and the energy leaving the building. So for the first part, the heat from people, every people generates the heat in the space. And heat from the computer applicants, which is the equipment devices. Heat from lights, light or artificial lights use the electricity, which generates the heat inside the, the room. And uh, the solar heat from the windows, which is the solar heat gains. And uh, energy can lose from the space through this means. The first one is the heat loss conducting through the exterior walls and the exterior windows as well. The second one is the infiltration. If the building is leaky, the heat will lose from those gaps of the wall and he goes through the window ventilation. If you open the window, whenever the window is warmer than outside, air will move the heat from inside to outside. Now, if, you, if we want to make people inside the space comfortable, we have to keep both sides balanced. But what if it's not balanced? We will have to introduce the heat from the heating system or we have to use the AC to move the heat from the building. This is what this chart means. Uh, if we only look at the January, very cold season, we have glazing conduction and uh, opaque conduction that move the heat from the building and we don't have enough heat that generates inside the building. That's why we have such a great, large amount of the heating that we need extra from the heating system. And let's look at the July. We see all the heat is generated inside the, the space, but there's no other means to remove the heat from the space. Now we have a large portion of the cooling load that HVAC system that need to take care of. And what HVAC stands for? And of course, HVAC stands for heating, ventilation, and AC. Let's look at, but for energy modeling, it really just means a mechanical system that provides heating whenever a people feels cold or a sensor says the space is too cold. A system provides cooling when a people feels hot and provides ventilation. Now let's look at the heating system first. This is the very kind of famous drawings that we see everywhere. And it illustrates the first system and that we use inside the building is a furnace to make the space warm. Here are basically four elements that consist of the heating system. First of all, what is the source energy? It can be wood, coil, electricity, natural gas, gasoline, biomass, and the solar. And the system, what I call here a transformer, here is how it transforms the source energy to a uh, to heating. And uh, we have like furnace, boiler, boiler basically generates hot water and heat pump and the solar heater. The next one is the uh, media, how we move, how we carry the heat from one location to the room, which we can use air, water, steam, and refrigerant. And the last one is the terminal and device, which is the device we place inside the room. So we can have a diffuser, a fan core unit, radiator, and radiant panels, or a building system. So let's 
just take one example, single example. Yeah, we can use a, a wood or a coil furnace. And because the furnace is already placed inside, it's a just a system is already, but it's also a, a terminal. It's because it's already placed inside the room. So this is a building system. And if we use a boiler, we we can use a natural gas boiler, which generates hot water. And uh, if we pump hot water, so we probably will need to use radiator or radiant panel inside the room. So this is a very a simple heating system that I can imagine. Of. So the first one is a portable electric heater that I often see. I used to have one in my apartment when the uh, when the heating system is not providing enough heating. And uh, on the right side is a commercial uh, unit heater. We can use electricity or gas. Now I just want to show you this simple unit heater inside the OpenStreetMap application. You don't have to follow up. And if you want to try it yourself, you can download, install the OpenStreetMap application from this link and uh, try it on your machine. So this is an empty Open Studio. I just opened up. And if you go to the thermal zone tab, I just, this is just a demo. It's, I'm not going to run this simulation. I'm just, I just want to show you the, the unit heater here. Once you select the library, you can see here, there's a unit heater. So you can see a several unit heaters. A unit heater with electricity, with gas, with hot water, and uh, VAV fan. The same thing, electricity, gas, uh, hot water. So let's use the simplest, the first one, electricity, uh, unit heater with electricity. And then once we jack this unit heater to the thermal uh, zone equipment and drop into this location, you can see we just added one unit heater to this thermal zone. Now let's look at the properties. So the basic settings of the unit heater, including the schedules, availability, uh, availability schedules, and maximum supply airflow rate. We for now we just use auto size first, and the fan control. This is the uh, settings for the unit heater itself, and under here we have a uh, fan properties. You can see the fan efficiency, pressure rise, and the maximum flow rate, efficiency, etc. And the last one is the coil, electric heating coil. You also have some settings over here. This unit heater has two child objects one fan, one electric heating coil. Okay? This is a very simple system. Now let's go back to the slides. As I mentioned, this is a, a real unit heater. So from this diagram, you can see the two main part. Two main part is a fan and a coil, which you can see uh, from you can see from the Energy Plus documentation. Unit heater here contains a fan and a heating coil. And by the way, you, I, I since I have a the tab open here, so I have some documentations because from the Open Studio application, you, if you have any any questions about uh, uh any inputs, you have to. There's no way to look it up what that input means. If you wanna look at the more detailed big letters has a, an energy plus web version documentation you can look it up this each component has input has input and output and you know, what what kind of output this component can can generate from the simulation and uh, even an example here i can i will show you how to use these examples in our later tutorial demos
in the grasshopper in our layer uh, bug uh, interface you can say it's very easy to understand the two inputs two main inputs heating coil and a fan here you know to make a unit heater you need a fan and a coil